Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome to the next episode of Tailcraft. We finally gathered enough supplies to make a good trap right on the outskirts of the village. We're gonna make a pitfall with dripstone at the bottom. It's gonna be really cool. I'm nowhere near a redstone expert, but I know the basics, so we'll see what we can do. After that, I'm thinking we should make a village library. It's about time in the game where we get mending, and we need a place for our librarians to actually study. But before we do that, let's make that trap. Alright, so I gathered a bunch of cocoa beans from the nearby jungle to make brown concrete powder. Brown concrete powder falls with gravity, like sand and gravel do, and it looks just like this path block, so we're going to make this pitfall trap right around here, blending it into the path so they don't know. The key to making this pitfall trap work is going to be blending it into the environment. We can't make it so big to the point where it looks like an obvious pitfall trap, but it can't be so small to the point where it'll never catch anything. This looks deep enough to me. Now to add the dripstone. This is what's actually going to do a majority of the damage. This fall alone wouldn't kill anything, but this fall mixed with the dripstone damage, that'll hurt. Alright, this looks great. Now we just have to conceal it and make sure nobody knows it's there. So the way this is going to work is we're going to have a piston that's constantly on, connected to a sign, and that sign is going to be connected to a bunch more which are all holding up the brown concrete powder. When the piston is then turned off, it'll break the sign that's connected to it, which will break all the other signs and make the brown concrete powder fall. Now we just need to figure out where to put this lever that activates the trap in the first place. I don't want this door to be messing around with the, elect with the redstone circuitry. I almost said electric circuitry. About 2,000 years too early in Minecraft. Maybe if we put the door on the other side of this block, it'll work though, because the downside of this tower is actually hollow. There's nothing below it, which is kind of intended. We need to have this lever within view of the pitfall trap so we know when to actually activate it. But I'm thinking if we can wire this below this lever and get it to go underground to the piston, it would work. Is this redstone on? Um, can't really see it. Let's try to put another one. I think it is. Yeah, that's definitely on. Now we just need to wire this to the piston. I'm thinking we'll have to take it the other way, though, because the piston is closer to the left side than the right. So maybe we can just take this underground slightly. We don't want this to be seen at all from the surface. That's the problem. It has to be completely hidden, otherwise it'll be really obvious. We'll put a repeater here just to get a slight delay. Repeaters can make your signal a little bit stronger, or they can delay the signal by like half a second per one repeater. This should take us outside as soon as we break this one block of cobblestone. Yep, perfect. Now we just need to connect this to that little hole over there where the piston is. I think that's it right there. That should have connected the redstone. I think it did. Now the piston should be on. Let's just check first in case we screwed something up. I'm not a redstone expert. Yeah, the piston's on. It worked perfectly. Now we just have to cover it up and make it look like it's not even here. Now we just have to cover up the rest, make sure it still works from up here, and we should be good to do the next part of the trap. Piston is there, and piston is out. Okay, it works perfectly, just as intended. So as you can see, we just put a sign on the piston that's extended, and we're connecting all of these other signs to it. The brown concrete powder goes on top, so if we activate that lever now, 
the piston is going to break all the signs, and then since the concrete powder blocks react to gravity, all of them will fall onto the dripstone and kill anything that was on top of it. Hopefully. We'll see how it works after we test it. Now it's just a matter of getting all the signs out and putting the concrete powder on top, which takes a little bit of time. It's kind of awkward to place the signs, but it'll all be worth it in the end once this thing's working. It'll make the village much safer. We're a few concrete powder short, but we'll just use dirt to blend it into the path even better. And our pitfall is done! I don't think it looks too suspecting, it looks more just like an area that's traveled a lot. And it works! Wow! Awesome! Now let's just do it again and reset it. If I was an illager, I would not want to be standing on this thing, because it is certain death beneath me. But now let's make that library we talked about in the intro. So the idea I had behind this build is sort of combining the styles we've used in all of our previous builds in the village so far. This library will have an interior very similar to our toolsmith's house, in which the first floor is going to be more of a work area for the librarians, and the top floor is going to be more of a bedroom and living quarters for them as well. I want this library's first floor, where they're going to be working, to feel a little bit cramped, almost like they have nothing to do but study and work on their books. So I'm going to make the roof a slight bit smaller than I normally would using slabs. Breaking up the texture, I'm just going to simply use the same colors. I'm going to have stripped oak logs and then oak planks right next to each other. We've used this technique before, and I really like how it turns out in this village. Since these librarians work so hard all day in their cramped studies, I decided to give their bedrooms two high windows so they can have a nice view once a good day's work is done. This part of the build took some time to get down, but do you see how the cobblestone kind of clashes with the oak wood? I needed to figure out how to break it up, so I decided to come do a little 3D building and have this archway protrude from the oak so it breaks up the cobblestone by just being in front of it. The spruce is acting sort of like a transitioning block in between the gray of the cobble and then the yellow of the other stuff. This is called a lectern. It's the workstation of the librarian villagers, and it acts just like the blast furnace and the smithing table do. I feel like more villagers on average would go to a library as opposed to a more warlike building, like a blacksmith or the smithing table, but I decided to use kind of a giant patio out here so the path can hit it from two angles. I'm really happy with the shaping of this building. I want to use more of these hanging signs around the village. I honestly forget they're in the game sometimes, because they're such a small feature, and despite being brand new, I think they're really cool. Lastly, we'll detail up the roof to make it look less plain. And after this, we should be done. And check that out, now we have a library. I really like the design. It's really small and compact. I've made libraries like this similar in my other worlds, but I kind of scaled this one down to fit with all our overall style. Let me know what you guys think. And just like that, our village is safer and more informed. We built a really nice pitfall and have a really nice library today. So I'd call that an overwhelming success. I hope you guys enjoyed, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. With that being said, we'll make this a short outro. Catch you guys later. Kingpin out. See you in the next episode, coming real soon.